Awesome. Cool. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Questma tutorial on history taking for OSCEs. My name is Yezen. Uh, I'm the founder at Questmed, um, and I uh, sort of am leading the OSCE side of things at this point. Um, so um, I found that OSCEs were one of the main things that used to trip me up as a medical student. Um, and equally, I felt that there weren't enough sort of solid scenarios that were available um, present for students to revise from. And so I sort of also worked on a lot of the videos that we made. So what I thought we the best way of doing it, rather than me sort of going through mark schemes to start off with, what I suggested, um, and the auditorial team agreed, hopefully you'll agree too, was that what we do is we review some of our history taking videos and sort of work through together and see what went well, what didn't go well. And then we can go through the, the related mark schemes and sort of pick out the important things that I feel that uh, people tend to miss um, in their history taking. So hopefully it'll be useful for you. Good. And uh, please give us feedback at the end. This is the first time we're doing this sort of station. So it'd be useful to see what you think. So uh, we'll do one history of taking video. Um, the, all these videos are on YouTube, by the way, um, if you haven't seen them before, um, I'll show you the link in a second. And then we will discuss the key points and we'll review the mark schemes and then we'll pick up on the learning points towards the end. So again, all the videos that we have, so we have about 18 videos now. I think we've got a few left to release in the next couple of weeks. So uh, either just Google QuestMed YouTube or bit.ly slash QuestMed tutorials. That's where all the videos are. We're hoping to add them to the OSCE platform very soon in the next week or two as well. So hopefully you can see them if you have an OSCE subscription, but they will always be free as well. So um, yeah, we're trying to make sure that uh, this is a useful resource for anyone to use. Good, okay. So uh, this is our OSCE platform, by the way. So we have 160 scenarios, mark sheets, an OSCE textbook, and we have a, a group study audio channel where you can find a study buddy online. So um, if you are not busy on Thursday, we have a difficult communication skills mock OSCE. So all you need to, go, need to do is to go onto the platform and click find a study buddy and you'll, uh, at 6 p.m. on Thursday, and you'll be matched with a group and you can go through OSCEs together from anywhere in the world. So hopefully that'll be useful. Good, okay, let's see if it works, it does. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna watch the video and then we're gonna figure out what I did well, what I didn't do well, and then we can discuss. And uh, I am the actor, so uh, uh, feel, it's, feel free to be very, um, be very brutally honest with my performance and they can go from there. Okay, cool. Uh, can anyone, everyone hear this? Does that work? Hello, my name is Dr. Samurai. I'm one of the doctors. Can I just confirm your name and age, please? Yeah, it's Melissa, uh, Melissa Jones, and I'm 57. Hi, Melissa. Can I call you Melissa? Is that all right? Yeah, of course you can. It's my name, yeah. Great. So can you tell me what's brought you into hospital today? Well, it's my chest, really. Um, I just got really bad chest pain. Right, okay. And can you tell me a bit more about that? When did it start? Oh, right, and yeah. How long has been going on for? Um, well, it started last night, actually. Mm -hmm. It was uh, after I had my tea. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. I was just... Um, yeah, then I think the sound is gone. Um, About now. Like, I spoke to the doctor and... Uh, All good. I think you yeah. need to get into, into hospital. Yeah, I agree. I think that's definitely the right yeah. thing to do. So it's really good that you've come to the hospital yeah. to, to yeah. have some more tests. Yeah. Um, so can you just tell me where the pain is exactly? If that's all right. Yeah, it's 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 just it's right in the middle. Okay, right in the middle, is yeah. it? Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and you said that it's um, it started last night. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how would you describe the pain? It's like a really sharp pain. Mm, I see. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. does it move anywhere? No, no, no. Oh, okay. And um, does anything make it better or worse at all? Um, well, I'm trying not to move because I'm finding if I move, especially if I twist. Mm then it's really, really painful. But also it's like, I try not to like breathe too deeply as well. Cause if I, if I take a deep breath, mm -hmm. then, then that's agony. 
I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's more painful when you breathe in and out. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, have you tried any painkillers for the pain? Well, I did try some ibuprofen, mm. and that that helped a little bit. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and how bad would you say the pain is out of ten? Um. What now? Or? Mm, uh, now. Yeah. Um. I'd say it's probably about six or seven. I see. Okay. Yeah. And when it was at its worst? Oh crikey. Mm. Nine or ten, it was really bad. That's why I got so worried. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and is it painful when you press down onto your chest? Yes, it is, yeah. It's painful, yeah, is yeah, it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and have you noticed anything else apart from the chest pain? Um, no, it's just the chest. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about other things that you might have experienced. Um, yeah, Have you had any shortness of breath at all? No, I wouldn't say shortness of breath. Mm. It's more that I'm trying not to breathe deeply, if you know what I mean. Mm. So I know my breathing is quite short, but yeah. that's deliberate. Okay. Um, and have you had any cough at all? No. No. No, okay. I mean, I think I coughed once, but that's just because I had a little tickle. I see. I understand. Yeah. Um, and have you had any fevers at all? No, no, no. No? No. Okay. Um, and have you noticed your heart beating quite quickly or quite rapidly? No. No, or feeling it in your chest at all? No. Okay, right. Um, and have you noticed any problems with uh, pain in your tummy at all? No, no. 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 Um, and no problems with your bowels, or diarrhea, no, or constipation, no. like that. Um, and no weakness in your arms or legs. No, okay. no. Um, and no changes to your vision at all, or any headache. No, that's all fine. Okay, yeah. right. And have you had any fevers at all? No, no, no. no. And any night sweats? No, no. no. Uh, any weight loss at all recently? No, no, no. Okay. Just in terms of your background, can you tell yeah. me if you have any medical problems that you see your doctor for? Um, well, it's just, I, I mean, I do get a bit of heartburn. Okay. Um, but then also, I'd, you know, I do, I do have a, a problem with the thyroid. Right. Um, and I've got rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell me a bit more about your rheumatoid arthritis in terms of um, treatments? So well, it's, it seems pretty much under control, actually. Okay, that's yeah, good. yeah, I've got one medication, and that seems that seems to be absolutely fine. Okay, that's good. Yeah, to hear. yeah. Um, do you have any problems with your heart? Um, no, I don't. No, no. Okay, no. right. Um, and um, do you have any high blood pressure? No, or not that I'm aware of. Diabetes no. or high no. cholesterol? No, 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 no. no. Okay, right, and no problems with your lungs in the past? No, no, no. okay. Uh, and what medications do you take at this point? Um, just brought me, uh, um, so here we go. So we've got the, uh, is it omeprazole? Oh, I can't read these things. Yes, omeprazole, uh, yeah. yeah. That's the thing, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have that um, just like once a day. Yeah. And then the ibuprofen. Okay. And then the yeah, methotrexate, and that's for me, arthritis. Right, that's for me, arthritis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. And do you have any allergies to any medications? Um, no. Okay. No. Um, and um, is there anything that runs in the family? Um, well, that's what, you know, was concerning me a bit. It's like the fact my dad did die from a, a heart oh, attack. Right. So that's, that. that's a bit troubling. Um, but my, my sister had, um, she had a similar problem mm. um, last last year. And it oh. turns out that she had blood clots oh, in, right. her, in her lungs. Mm. I see. Okay, and yeah. and was that sort of investigated in terms of? Well, actually, it was after her operation. Oh, I see. And okay. so luckily, she was in hospital anyway, so right. they they caught that mm. really easily and quickly. I see. Um, but I know that she, you know, that she had ch chest pains. It sounds right. a bit like mine. Oh, I see. Um, but okay. it was it, that got sorted. So yeah. we'll be sure to consider that when we do our test as well. Yeah. So hopefully, we yeah. find out if it is that. Yeah. Um, just to go back to your father, can I ask you, how old was he when he had the heart attack? Um, 89. 89, I yeah. see. Okay. So it was a good old age. Right. But it was, you know, just the worry that does it run in the family? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So certainly a very valid concern. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just a, a few more questions, if that's okay, just so that with regards course, to your yeah. uh, lifestyle. So um, at the moment, are you working? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. working in a bank. Okay, yeah. right. Um, and then who do you live with at home? I just my husband. Husband, okay. Yeah, yeah. And normally yeah. you're able to look after yourself with no problems. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was okay. going to say, usually I'm kind of really, you know, quite quite lively, usually. Okay. Um, but, I mean, this is 
yeah, this is frightening a bit. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we'll yeah. get to the bottom of it as soon as we can. Yeah. Just a few questions about your lifestyle, if that's all yeah, right. Um, yeah. So do you smoke? No, never. Oh, okay. No, no. Um, and do you drink alcohol? Yeah, yeah, every now and again I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. And can you tell me roughly how much you drink in a week? Um, Not a lot. I'd say maybe about two or three glasses a a week. I see. Of uh, a wine. Of wine. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And that's usually with a meal. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and we ask everyone this, but so do you take any recreational drugs at all? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Okay. Right. So, did you have any particular ideas about what's going on? I don't know, really. I mm. mean, initially I thought maybe I just like pulled something, mm. um, but I think this is like the pain's too bad for that. I see. Right. Yeah. And is there anything particularly you're concerned about? Well, yeah, it's a, it's the fact that you know my, my dad died of a heart attack. Yeah. It's, that's the the obvious thing that's in my head is, yeah. oh my God, does it run the family? Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try and get you an answer as soon as we can once we do our test. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm a sister as well, obviously, yeah. with what happened with her. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, we will look into that as well for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'd like to examine you. Um, okay. And then afterwards, um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to do some tests and um, okay. looking at your heart and also yeah. looking at your lungs. Yeah. Uh, and then once we do those tests, uh, we'll come back and we'll have a chat about what we should do going forward, okay. if that's all right. Okay. Um, great. Is anything else you wanted to ask? Um, no, I think that's everything. I just, I'm just glad to be here to get properly checked out. Okay, great. So I'll yeah. come back and see you shortly then, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, right. Hello, everyone. So I'll spare you my one minute of presentation because that's not really the sort of point of the station. Um, but if you wanted to watch it, you can watch it on YouTube. I'm slightly blinded by the light here, as you can see, a bit uh, smoldering, I think. But yeah, anyways, um, fine. Let's move on to the next section. So, one. Okay, so uh, question on the chat, please. What do you think? Went well. I'll answer your question shortly, Ben, um, as part of this. So what do you think went well in this scenario? This is how you give feedback to people as well if you're doing OSCEs together. Nothing went well. No? Structured. Okay, good. Yeah. Got the concerns about the family history. Very important. Flow information was steady. Ice. Ice was at the end. Yeah. Got a bit of ice. Okay. Anything else important that I picked up that is useful? Yeah. Cardinals. I'm assuming this. Do you mean sort of a? What, what do you mean by cardinals? Sorry. Family history is picked up as well. Okay. So yeah, pathetically addressed concerns. Very important. Yeah. Okay. So we'll touch up on that. Good. And then what didn't go well? Do you think any particular aspects that didn't go well? Okay, so more nice to incorporate ice more throughout. Yeah, yeah, so we can talk about that. Um, ask comorbids of the patient like hypertension, diabetes. So I think I asked about heart disease in general, um, but if you can, um, yeah, ask fevers twice. Very good. Um, allergies, drug dosages, absolutely. Yeah, agreed. One point, patient was in pain. Ask if she's okay. Patient in pain. And then past travel is useful. Yeah, I suppose it depends, I guess. Um, yeah, okay, past travel. Social history, we talked about social history. Okay, okay. And then uh, surgeries would be useful. Yeah, very good. So surgeries, yeah, could be useful to talk about. Um, okay, cool. Thank you very much. And what do you think you might find difficult in this scenario if you were doing it? Um, that's a question, you know, if, if you had the same same scenario, do you think you would find it easy? Do you think you'd find it hard? Any aspects where you'd struggle? No? Okay. People find it easy enough? Tailoring the questions. Yeah, absolutely. The sequence. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reassuring her a bit more, especially at the start. When to reassure. Yeah. Yeah. I think when to be the challenge. Hmm. The time limits, very important. Yeah, okay. Empathetic. 
being empathetic to the pain and the time limit. Yeah. And then asking about trauma. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Okay. Very good. So lots of really good answers here. Perfect. Nice one. Okay, fine. So let's, uh, so let's go to the mark scheme now. So what I'll do is I will get onto the platform and we can talk about the key points that I feel are important. Okay. So uh, this is our platform. Let's see if I can find the one we did. I think we did chest pain one. Yeah, Mr. Jones, that's her. So I'll just start the timer there. Just gonna make this big screen. Yeah. Okay, fine. So let's go through the mark scheme in a bit more detail. So this is, you know, this is what you see. So the patient comes in with chest pain, right? Um, and then at the end, which I didn't show you, presenting a differential diagnosis and initial management plan. Um, the actor is given lots of different things. Um, and in certain scenarios, they say, you know, only if I'm asked specifically to point towards the source of the pain, do you then reveal certain things? The drug history, if it's there. Um, and then to tell the doctor, could I have overdone it in the gardening? In this case, she didn't say this, but generally speaking, the main concerns that we identified were that she was worried about her dad's health problems and she was worried about the sister's blood clots in the lungs, which we talked about. So, so I think it's important when you're introducing yourself, if, I think this is not usually a problem, same sort of stuff, making sure that you have the appropriate consent. Different medical schools have different ways of doing it. Most people will say, you know, my name is Yezen, I'm one of the FY1 doctors, or he has a samurai full name, depending on some medical schools are very strict about it. Um, you know, can I get your name and date of birth? You know, I'd like to take a history, et cetera, et cetera. That's all very, fairly straightforward. The most important thing I would say about when you do a history is to be very clear about giving an open question. So not going in to say, you know, where's the pain? Or um, sort of, you know, how long has it been going on for? not those close questions. You start off with, you know, what's been going on? How can we help you today? And what I like to do is once I ask the first open question, I tend to always ask another open question and say, is there anything else you've noticed? So that by that point, that is a way of reducing the amount of information the actor needs to give to you because you're sort of pulling it all out. So you're saying, tell me what's going on. They talk for a bit and then you say, is there anything else that you've noticed? Or can you tell me a bit more about that? And then they talk for longer and you basically pull out everything that they need to tell you. And then it reduces the burden on ask, asking lots of different questions. So I always recommend asking at least two open questions to start off with before sort of pinpointing on certain things. And then I think, as we saw in the video, Socrates was very important, um, asking sort of about the pain, the site, the onset, character, radiation, associated symptoms, severity. Hopefully that's fairly straightforward for those of you who've come across history taking as a concept. And again, it was uh, in the video. And then a systems review, I think I did mention most things, I think, in terms of the main things we're looking for are fevers, cough, palpitations, um, sort of, you know, um, abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, Again, you can ask about sort of things like fevers, night sweats, weight loss. Um, but I think after a point, it's, it's really most important to think about the systematic review in terms of your differentials as well. So that's another thing. If you don't have much time, you're thinking in yourself, you know, what else could this be? So in this case, you're thinking, is this a heart attack? Is this pericarditis? Is this a chest infection? Is this... Um, sort of a viral illness, for example. So that's why you're asking, you know, is, do you have a fever? Do you have a cough? Do you have palpitations? You know, do you have a dull pain? That's the sort of the reasons that you're asking these questions. So if you really have to hone in, those are the questions I would ask that are specific to the diagnosis you're thinking about. And that develops over time. Um, and tenderness to palpation we talked about. Um, so one thing that in terms of past medical history, the um, you should be asking about existing medical conditions, which we did, but um, it's very important as well to ask directly certain things. So in this case, I asked, do you have any heart disease or have you had it? Or I can't remember if I asked about stroke, um, but I didn't ask about surgeries. That's right. Someone picked that up. Um, what we did in this scenario actually was we did a sort of we did it in real time an OSCE setting so that um, if we met in, invariably, even the most experienced person, so you know, I've been working for about five, six years now, I will always forget maybe one or two tiny things, but as long as you may get the main picture, and that's true for most global mark schemes now, it should be sufficient. So even if you miss a tiny thing, like in this case, okay, so it's important to ask about previous surgeries, but 
in this particular scenario, it wasn't that relevant. And picking that up and it shows you, or, or like, pick, or not picking it up rather, is not a huge deal in the examiner's eyes and in the patient's eyes because they, um, you will have to just pick up the stuff that is relevant to your history taking. Because invariably, you know, one ever does an examination or a history in six minutes. Um, very, you know, you wouldn't. So that's why the sort of there is an element of rushing that you're so you're trying to just pick up the main points. So don't worry if you don't get sort of one or two points. It's all about the global side of things. Um, so uh, we talked about family history. So oh sorry, going back to the medical history. So you'll know that she said she talked to me about rheumatoid arthritis. It's very important to ask about the rheumatoid arthritis or any long term conditions and say, tell me a bit more about that. You know, do you take steroids do you take something like you know do you take other stuff because that can have relevance on whether or not if they have active rheumatoid arthritis that could indicate that the chest pain may be something related to that like a, i don't know pericarditis for example or could be a heart attack as well and um, so uh, that those are the reasons that you ask more about certain core sort of conditions and this is what you do in real life as well um, we talked a bit about the family history we talked about the social history someone picked up that I asked about recreational drugs and that's how you would ask you say no sorry we asked this to anyone to everyone but um you know have you had any recreational drugs and one of the causes of having a myocardial infarction is actually um a um cocaine use for example so in this case it was important for me to ask so i did if that makes sense um and then i talked about ideas concerns expectations now ideas concerns expectations very important because you don't need to be too sort of it's prescriptive prescriptive about it it's more about making sure the patient is felt to be hurt so you say you know do you have any particular concerns you want to address you know is there anything you know any ideas what this might be that you don't need to go through sort of ideas concerns expectations per se as long as you show that you are thinking about the patient and then they can respond and the plus side which everyone always forgets to do is that which some people mentioned again in the um in the chat was that you not only have to ask but you have to address. So if they say, I'm worried that this could be a heart attack and you know my sister had a P, uh, pulmonary embolism, then you have to say, you have to address it and say, you know, I appreciate this very valid concern. We'll make sure to look into that for you when we do our test going forward. So you don't just say, okay, cool, and move on, which I have done that in an OSCE before and it didn't look very nice. So it's very important that you address and acknowledge the concerns rather than just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, and then this is other stuff, differential diagnosis, most likely to be costochondritis related to movements. But again, you have quite a lot of differentials. And again, in any case, you would do all these examinations, all these investigations, examination, ECG, troponins, including blood tests, consider a D-dimer, a chest x-ray. And for was costochondritis, you know, you would mention is self-limiting and uh, paracetamol and NSAIDs would be the answers. And basically costochondritis is an inflammation. Um, sort of a musculoskeletal inflammation uh, around the sternum and it becomes very painful. So um, that's what it is. But finally, these are all the general stuff. So the general stuff is very important because you're professional, you're active listening. So you're picking up on things that the patient is telling you, you're demonstrating empathy. Um, I think what, um, someone mentioned a very good, it's a very good point actually. So I think we actually ended up cutting it out uh, in the end, but um, there was a point where she was in pain and then I think in the actual OSCE, uh, what I think what I said was something along the lines of um, something like, you know, do you want to take a moment? Should we give you some pain relief before we continue? I think just for the flow of the station, we ended up taking it out. But in the real exam, it's very good to show um, and in real life to, to show to the patient that, you know, you actually care and you do feel that, you know, we need to get on top of your pain before we continue. So I think that's very, very important. Well done to the person who picked that up. Um, and then finally, um, just having a sort of um, signposting. So signposting can be sort of summarizing things throughout, um, which you may not have time for, or you can just say, you know, I'd like to ask you a bit more about your lifestyle. That is social history. Can I ask you more about your medical history, your medic medical problems in the past? And then finally, you'll normally have a sort of global score um, so uh, if it's good, excellent. And most medical school um, mark schemes will have a sort of global score um, at the end. And then, yeah, so that's my score for myself. Got zero, but hey. Okay, cool. So that is the first station. I hope that's helpful. Uh, let's see, do, any, any questions in the chat? Uh, let's see, I think I haven't looked at it. What do people say? Um, so what main concerns are, what she wants and needs. So yeah, okay, fine. Is there a limit to how many symptoms and systems you need to pass? 
No, there is no limits on how many symptoms. It's all about some, if you have enough time, then you can go for it and just do maybe one or two symptoms from each um, body system. But if you don't have time and you really, you know, you have a very short period of time, then it's just asking a couple of things, maybe three or four or five extra questions, very quick fire stuff um, to, to answer. And hopefully that should be sufficient. And normally it is in the global mark scheme. Any particular questions on that? Will we ask for COVID infection history? Uh, I suppose, yeah, nowadays uh, you would, but I don't think it's central to the station. I'll be very honest with you. Um, anyone with chest pain, we don't necessarily go straight to ask if you've had COVID infection, um, but we normally test anyways in, in hospital now nowadays. So I don't think it's expected of you in an OSCE scenario. Cool, okay, right. Let's move on to the next station. Um, so, uh, what are we on this one, isn't it? History taking. Okay. We reviewed the mark scheme. Okay, so now we go on to the second station. Uh, again, this is on the YouTube channel. Hopefully works. Yeah. Okay, weight loss history. Uh, any questions on the previous one for continue? I think everyone fairly straightforward, I think. Okay, good. We will now continue watching the next video. Cool. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Ball. I'm one of the doctors in, in clinic today. Thank you for coming in. Can I just get you to confirm your name and age, please? Yeah, it's uh, Lucy Daniels. And I'm 47. Nice to meet you. Can I call you Lucy? Of course, yeah. Thank you. So um, I hear you've not been feeling very well recently. Could you tell me a bit about what's been happening? Um, well, it's just that I'm losing weight. Okay. Could you tell me a little bit more about, about your weight loss? Well, it's just that, you know, I wasn't, I'm not on a diet or anything, so it's like I'm not deliberately setting out to lose weight, but, but it just seems to be like, dropping off. Mm. Um, yeah. And how much weight do you think you've lost? Um, about nine kilograms in about six months. Okay, that's that's quite a lot of weight. Mm. Do you have any ideas what what might be causing this weight loss? Um, not really. And that's why I thought I'd better come in. I'm, I'm glad you did. Mm -hmm. Do you? Is there anything you're worried about in particular that I can help with today? Um, I suppose. You know, because I'm, I'm worried, but I, it's possibly because my, my grandma, um, she lost a lot of weight and it, it turns out to be, um, it, it was bowel cancer and she was skin and bone at the end. And, and again, just because um, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm sorry to hear about your grandmother. Um, and I think we'll, we'll talk a bit more today and try and find out a bit more about what's been going on mm. and we'll see if there's anything else we can do to help, okay? Have you noticed anything else in the last six months that's been out of the ordinary for you? Well, I suppose maybe linked to that, it's, you know, I, I, I seem to get diarrhoea. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm just going to ask you a bit more about your diarrhoea. Um, how many times a day are you going? About, about three or four times a day now, yeah. Okay. And what's it like? Like? Is it is it runny? Is yeah. it yeah? yeah. Um, is there any blood in it at all? No. Okay. And can I ask what colour it is? Yeah, it's just brown. It's just brown. Okay. And when you have the diarrhea, do you have any pain in your tummy? Mm. No. no. Okay. And do you get any bloating if tummy's sticking out? No. No. Okay. Good. Any nausea or vomiting? So feeling of being sick around this time as well? No. And is there anything else out of the ordinary that you've noticed? Um, I'm just feeling a lot more anxious than, than I usually am as well. Okay. And, and what do you mean by anxious? What does that mean to you? Well, I'm just generally quite on, feel on edge, but I'm, I'm getting palpitations as well. Okay, okay. And, and the palpitations you're having, are they fast or are they slow? No, the fast, you know, it's like I'm on a, like, I'm on a train track. Okay. Um, and when you have these palpitations, is there anything that brings them on in particular? 
I've not really seen a pattern. Um, the, the, the more regular. Okay. You know, the, the happening most days now. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. And when you get them, is there any pain at all? No, no, it's just like boom, 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 boom. Okay, all right. Um, so no, no chest pain when you're having these palpitations, but they've no. been coming on a bit more regularly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have you noticed any change in your breathing at all? No. No? Any coughing at all? No. No? All right. Have you had any fevers over the last six months? No, not fevers, but I mean, also, I just seem to be having quite a lot of um, hot flushes. I mean, it might be my age. I'm, I am about that age. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. And at night, have you been finding you're, you're sweating a lot at night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You are? Do you drench the bed sheets when you're sweating at night? No. No, doesn't wake no. you up and you feel you need to change no. your bed clothes no okay all right i'm just going to ask you a few other quick questions sort of run through everything and mm -hmm. um, have you had any changes in your vision at all any dry eyes blurred vision mm -hmm. no okay have you noticed any lumps or bumps anywhere mm -hmm. no no any joint pains at all mm -hmm. good any changes in your skin color or texture no no good okay have you had any changes in your bladder function no. No? Okay. And you mentioned some diarrhea. Have you been constipated at all? No. No. Okay. All right. Have you been abroad anywhere in this last six months or, or in the six months prior to when you were feeling unwell? No. no. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that's been out of the ordinary? Any Anything else that we haven't talked about that you thought that this just seems a bit strange to me? I don't think so. No. So it's mainly... Um, You've had some anxiety, some palpitations mm -hmm. of that, diarrhea, and the main thing that's concerning you is the weight loss. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Now, do you have any other medical problems at all? Uh, well, well, I was diagnosed as um, having type 2 diabetes a couple of months ago. Okay. And do you take any medications for that? No, no, I'd, um, I don't really like taking medication, so I decided to just try and, um, you know, regulate it with, with my diet. Okay. Have you changed your diet at all? No, not really. Okay. All right. Um, any other medical conditions at all? Um, no, that's it. No? Okay. No. And you don't take any medications for your diabetes. Do you take any medications for any other reasons? Mm, no. no. And you don't take anything from the pharmacist that you buy yourself? No, no. Okay. And are you allergic to any medications? Mm. No, not medications, no. Okay. Are you allergic to anything else? Um, yeah, because she not touch me. <laughs> and um, do you smoke? No, I've stopped. You stopped? Yeah. Well, well done for stopping. When did you stop? Two weeks ago. Okay. And what triggered you to stop at that point? No, I suppose it was just because I've been feeling so under the weather. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, well, no, I need to do something. So I thought, well, let's start with smoking, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah. that was probably a good place to start. Um, but when you were smoking, how many were you smoking a day? About 25. Okay. okay. And when did you start smoking? Oh, crikey, years ago. I was about 14, 15. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, and in terms of alcohol, do you drink alcohol? Yeah, I do, yeah. You yeah. do? And in an average week? How much would you say you drank? I'm not sure, really. Okay. How many times a week do you drink? How many days a week? Um, well, to be honest, it is most days now, yeah. Okay, all right. And what are you having to drink on, on these days? Wine. Yeah, yeah, it's just wine. And how many glasses of wine would you say you drank? Um, maybe two or three. Two or three small, mm. large glasses? Variable, I think. Okay. Yeah. But you're drinking every day at the moment. Mm, yeah. And has that changed recently? Um, well, I suppose it's become a bit more of a regular thing just because, um, I don't know, it just seems to like help a bit at night time with, with the anxiety. Okay, okay, I, I understand that. It's important that we, we maybe try and cut down on the alcohol a bit you are drinking more than we'd recommend you drink but if we, we can talk a bit more about that a bit later on yeah you know? okay um now do you take any other recreational drugs at all oh, no. 
Okay. And what's your home situation like? Who's with you at home? I have four girls, actually. Um, they're all at school, the secondary school. Okay. Um, you know, divorced from a husband. Uh, that was last year. Okay, I mean, it sounds like you're quite, quite busy. Are you finding you're under a lot more stress at the moment? Well, no more than usual, I suppose. But I mean, yeah, I do have quite a lot on. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. So do you have any family history of any medical problems? Um, well, yes, you know, my, my grandma, um, yeah, she, she had bowel cancer. Um, I don't know whether anybody else had that. Um, and I think my mum had um, a problem with her thyroid. Uh, I know she had an operation or something when I was a little girl. I'm not, not too sure. Okay, all right. With your gran, I, I know it's difficult to yeah. talk about her. Um, what age was, it, was she when she had the bowel cancer? Maybe about 75 or something like that. Okay, all right. So, sounds like there's been quite a few things going on. Um, and I think it's probably important that we do a, a, do a few things today. Firstly, if it's all right with you, we'd like to examine you. Um, and then after that, we'll, probably, we'll send some blood tests off, okay, just to check a few things over. Um, do you have anything else in particular you're worried about or want to talk to me today about? Well, yeah, I was just really, you know, it's linked to my grandma. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was really wanting to um, see whether I could have a referral to have a colonoscopy. Okay, and I know you were concerned about bowel yeah. cancer. I think, first of all, I'd like to do those blood tests because that'll tell us generally about how you are overall. If there's any concern on there, I'm very happy to refer you um, for a colonoscopy, but let's do those blood tests first and see how see where we go from there, okay? Um, the weight loss and the diarrhea are, are obviously concerning features, but there's a few other things in there that make me think this might be something else as well, but it is in the back of my mind and we may possibly be thinking of them. So I think one of the first things I'm thinking about for you, I mean, there's a possibility that you have got, um, also have issues with your thyroid. So your mother had thyroid problems and there's a possibility you also have hyperactive thyroid, which can give you things like weight loss, the palpitations, that anxiety that you've been feeling. Okay. Um, other things are that maybe you may, in fact, you may also be going through the menopause as well, which can give you a lot of the symptoms that you've been describing. So these are the sort of main things I'm thinking about. Um, also, mental health conditions can affect us in many ways. So the anxiety can give you palpitations, can affect your appetite and things, and you can lose weight that way. Although you say you haven't changed your diet much. Mm -hmm. But these are all things that it's worth exploring as well. And if um, at the moment there aren't any features that are worrying me particularly about bowel cancer, but it is in the back of my mind and I... I will, yeah. I'm listening to that concern that you have. Okay. okay. So if nothing comes up, I could have the colonoscopy then to wait out. Potentially, yes. But let's let's do those blood tests first. Is there anything else I can do for you today? No, it's everything. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Good. So so um hopefully that's useful. So what do we think the most likely diagnosis is out of interest in the chat? Any ideas? I think probably said it in the thing, in the, in the, in the sort of discussion section. Any ideas? Hyperthyroids, yeah, probably most likely hyperthyroid, isn't it? So it's very important. So hyperthyroidism, but we didn't lose focus of the other stuff in the, um, in the discussion so it's very important so we'll talk about that shortly so because so, that's an important thing that i found it more difficult when i was doing oskis so uh, so both dimmy and i are both medical registrars very fairly experienced i would say but clearly we have very different styles probably dimmy is uh, uh or dimmy t is her full name uh she is very nice isn't she very empathetic it's very good asking very important questions good okay right um what went well in this scenario in the chat, please. Good, poor, had a calm approach to help the patient trust the doctor. Yeah, only checked age, not date of birth. Yeah, fine. Comprehensive, empathetic, very empathetic. So some universities will be okay with age, I think, but it's very, very comprehensive, non-judgmental, red flags, 
very good, holistic, structured, lots of ice. She went back to do a lot of ice, didn't she? Very comprehensive. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, comprehensive, very good. Okay. Excellent. Nice, nice stuff. Good thoughts. Okay, what didn't go well? What do you think could have been better? Asking about the diet. Yeah, that's a good idea. Diet, good shout. Exercise, be useful. Yeah. Again, very difficult in all the sleep would be useful. Yeah. Difficult in the time constraints, I guess, when you're really trying to push things because um, sleep could be very important. Help with their anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That could be something. And coping at home. Yeah. Both very all important. Okay, and then um, fine. So we'll we'll hold on that thought. Um, mm, someone's asking diabetes advice. Good shout. Yeah, anxious contact with a psychologist. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I think it's a difficult one because obviously hyperthyroidism can cause anxiety. So um, maybe in the GP, I think probably what I would do um, in practice is I'll probably try and treat the hyperthyroidism first and see if that helps, and then consider psychological review that's what i would do um in practice okay so um it was longer than 10 minutes yeah so this is the thing so obviously dimmy is very comprehensive and she went through a lot of things and is very empathetic and, and did everything really well but again you know if this was a very short station it, it would have been she would have run out of time so it's about balancing that and trying to put in all the key important points not being too worried about the sort of tiny details that you might miss but just trying to get a global idea of things um, but certainly, I think that was to be a very gold standard in terms of um, kind of making sure they hit everything. But again, she would have run out of time, perhaps, if uh, this was in an OSCE scenario. Uh, what do you think you might find difficult in this scenario? So some of you, yeah, when a patient wants a certain investigation, referral or investigation, very, this is difficult. So um, it is very important to be able to address that. Sticking to time limits, yeah. So time limits, yeah. And then not having a flow in, it's not a pain history. Absolutely, a very true. And you'd expect it to, so someone's asking, would you be expected to know what that is? Yeah, you probably would actually, probably would be expected to know. Um, and then all the different symptoms not to be thrown off with investigating all of them, the time limit. Yeah, not to be thrown off by all the symptoms. Good, okay. So. Um, I'll make a general point, which I think um, one of the reasons we actually wanted to make loads of OSCE scenarios was because we felt that lots of uh, sort of books didn't really have the, the real OSCEs that you have in your exams. So what people tend to see in your exams, what you will tend to see in your exams is that you'll have a classic, you know, quote unquote, weight loss history or a pain history. And then there's always like a kind of twist at the end, not at the end or at the beginning. So usually it's something like, you know, I want this investigation. Am I going to die? you know, um, I, a patient may not have capacity, that sort of stuff. So it's important to practice a lot so that when you actually have a station that might be a bit difficult, that you end up knowing how to deal with all the curveballs rather than just sort of sticking to a very rigid flow. So it's about being flexible and be able to understand sort of how to manage patients' expectations and being sort of empathetic, but at the same time sort of uh, being flexible. So again, we did this uh, this video, the same thing in OSCE, an OSCE situation, OSCE scenario in that time frame without stopping. And actually, I think that obviously Dimi is very experienced and she was able to sort of manage it. But um, perhaps if maybe she wasn't so confident, she might have been thrown off a bit uh, and that would have maybe led to her performing less well. And obviously the patient would feel it as well and not have that confidence in her. So it's a very important point, I think, to take into consideration that don't expect your OSCEs to be sort of classical. Um, they do have lots of twists sometimes. So let's go to the mark scheme so that we can pick up all the points and then we'll hopefully uh, finish up the session. Uh, and please, yeah, by the and I think we'll finish up the next sort of 10 minutes or so. Um, but please fill in the feedback, which Emily will share shortly. Um, so where did we go earlier? We were on the um, we were on the websites, weren't we? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm just gonna mm, share. Oh, I need to stop share. That's why. Okay.
Sorry, give me a sec. And be appeal field to add any further points in the chat, by the way. Um, okay. Uh, good. Okay. So any other ideas? What do, you, what do you say if someone asks, am I going to die? We'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Just give us a sec. Okay, fine. So you're on the, we're back on the platform. Good. So on the OSCE platform, um, and then go to the OSCE book. Uh, where were we? We were doing weight loss history, weren't we? So if we go to the weight loss history. Oh, we were doing, we did the self-study, didn't we? It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's the same. Um, we can go through it. Um, so this is... And then you can start sort of study. Yeah, fine. Okay. Good. Okay. So Lucy Daniels. Okay. So the candidate gets weight loss, right? That's how you start off with. Then the actor is very anxious. She will not volunteer information unless specifically asked. So in this case, you might have noticed that what Dimi said was that she said, she said, you know, she kept asking a lot of open questions. And eventually, after a bit of time, the patient said, I'm very anxious. But she wouldn't have mentioned that if not sort of asked, um, sort of kept being asked the same question. Obviously, you have to have a limit to it. You can't just keep asking the same question. But that. Lots, asking lots of open questions is very important. The other important thing which I picked up as well from this is that when she said anxious, she said, what does anxious mean to you? So um, this is very important for certain things like dizziness. What does dizziness mean to you? And anxiety is one of those things that can mean different things to different people. Um, and then we, there was this aspect of types of diabetes and then social history. I think one thing that I really liked that Timmy did was that she said, you know, we can give you help and we can talk about it later in terms of your drinking and you know we can offer you support and she she congratulated the patient for stopping smoking and i think that's very important as well um and then i think she managed the ideas concerns expectations quite well so in terms of the mark scheme again the opening the consultation we mentioned open questions i think the most important thing that you have to say in any sort of um in, in any history really is you need to know what the red flags are in this case even though we thought that the most likely diagnosis was hyperthyroidism, you can't forget that the presenting complaint is weight loss. So therefore you must, must ask the red flags, which are fevers, night sweats, weight loss. Those are the main things. And obviously change in bowel habits, which she asked as well, what color was your stool? So that's very, very important. So, so don't hone in too quickly, try and keep it general in your history taking so that at the end in the interpretation, when you're presenting, you can then present your findings and say, you know, she didn't have all this stuff in terms of weight loss, but I think she has, you know, hyperthyroidism. And you can see it's quite, it's quite, it's, I would say significantly longer. <laughs> There's quite a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and then uh, symptoms of Addison's is, uh, but again, a lot of this is sort of small print stuff. Again, it's all about sort of making sure you hit the key points in terms of the, um, in terms of the, you know, with hyperthyroidism, fevers, nice weight loss, cancers, all that stuff. Very, very important. We talked about past medical history, um, medication history, including allergies, family, social history. We talked about ice. And I think in this case, hyperthyroidism is the most likely. But again, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, could be bowel cancer. So, so that's important to mention in your presentations. And again, I felt that something that Jimmy did really well was that she was able to... Um, really be empathetic and pick up the important bits and when the patient asked her a curveball she didn't flounder she said you know i clearly understand that but i think that it's more likely to be this but we will consider it so she acknowledged the concerns and addressed them rather than just sort of leave it uh, and just sort of say yeah okay fine um, we, we won't do that but, you know not to be confrontational and just sort of work with the patient in that context so um yeah so i think you know i think it was an excellent sort of um uh, excellent sort of phone, um, excellent sort of uh, end results towards the end. So fine. Um, what do we do? So that was, what else did I want to mention? Oh, and one thing that Dimi, I think did really well was that she summarized the presenting complaint. Again, um, that sometimes can be a bit of a time sap if you don't have that much time, but it, it's nice to do if you, if you feel like you have much time. Good. Okay. So then I'm going to stop share now. And then, uh, so yeah, please fill in the feedback uh, that uh, Emily has shared. Thank you very much. And then we go back to the um, mark scheme. And then I would like to ask you what your learning points are from today. Because if you pick up, if you know what your learning points is, you won't, remember, you won't forget it. So if you put, have any particular learning points, please 
put them on the chat. I think for me, when we did this and we sort of did it all together, the main learning points I picked up was the importance of lots of open questions, and being having a tailored systematic review if you have the time, acknowledging and addressing concerns, not forgetting red flags, and being able to manage um, lots of difficult patient sort of mini encounters. So someone said, um, how do you manage a patient that asks something like, am I going to die? Um, that is um, a hard question. I think the way that you do it is that, you know, you can say, Look, there's a, in a lot of cases, you kind of say something. Uh, it may be, depends. So if, if it's a breaking bad news and they're going to say, and they ask you, am I going to die? Then you say, look, there are lots of treatments that we can offer. You know, there's, I'm going to get you involved with one of our team, one of our other team members who will be able to speak to you more about the treatments. We're here for you. We're going to be able to support you. Um, and we will make sure that um, all the treatments that we can give you are offered to you. So it's it's kind of, obviously, maybe that wasn't the sort of best way of saying it, but I think the point is that to say you're about trying to reassure them and not saying, you know, no, you're not going to die or yes, you're going to die, but trying to sort of reassure their emotion, if that makes sense. Um, and um, yes, someone's saying be flexible, remember the red flags and be aware of time. Um, and yeah, so I guess the other thing is if someone says, am I going to die? you know, in another scenario, like in an endoscopy, we say, look, you know, this is a very safe procedure and it's the risks are very low. We feel like the benefits outweigh the risks and that's why we want to do it. So it kind of depends on the scenario where someone says it. So, yeah. Okay. So please fill in the feedback. I hopefully that was helpful. This is the first time we've done this sort of session. So if you liked it and you want us to do more, then please put it in the feedback um, and then we can do some more. And then in the next couple of weeks, uh, someone's asking, can you access to the phone app too? Yeah, that's right. So if you have the Questmed app, you if you go on OSCE and you have an OSCE subscription, you can access it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all optimized for OSCE. And yeah, look out on our socials for some new updates coming soon and some new videos as well on uh, YouTube. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you at our next session. Thank you.